Hi and good morning. Welcome to my uh, shop. Uh, I'm going to be focused on testing the tubes inside the uh, Macintosh FM receiver over here. And uh, just to start off, I thought we'd take a look at the schematic, just see what the tube lineup really amounts to. So let's take a look at the uh, schematic here. Okay, so here's the uh, schematic for the MR71 Macintosh FM receiver. And lots of tube symbols here. There's about a dozen tubes in this uh, in this set. And I'm, I'm, I, I think the trouble is going to be in the front end here because there's no indication of any reception happening with this receiver, yet I can hear that typical FM hiss coming out of it. So I suspect later stages are working. It's just nothing's getting through the front end here. So I'm hoping to test the tubes along this way, just kind of work my way through the receiver more or less. And I see the first tube is a 6DS4. Now that's something I've never heard of before. And when I looked in it, into it, lo and behold, here's what it is. It's a new Vista. Yes, there's one of these sitting in the set. I've already seen it. Um, hmm. So my tube testers won't test the new Vista, not, uh, not the ones I checked so far. Unless I've overlooked something. But uh, unfortunately, I can't test this very first thing. Now, I did put my finger on it. It is heating up. In fact, it was quite hot when I when I touched it. So I have to go on the assumption that this is operating, which is really unfortunate because that could be the trouble right there. But also it could be this or this, and then on, on, on we go. So let's see what we got next. We've got uh, one twelve AT7. That's uh, it's a uh, double triode, dual triode. And then that's a bunch of six AU6s after that. And then there's a few more six AU6s here and there. Is there any other 12 AT7s? Let's just take a look here. I don't think so offhand. What's this guy? Oh, that's fine. I don't see the name for this. This could be a 12 AT7 here. I didn't see the name for it. Oh, maybe this is a 6BL8 this way and another one this way. I think maybe that's what that is. Okay, so let's get going on the uh, 12 AT7. Okay, here we go. I'm just going to turn down my radio here. 12 AT7s in. We have it set here. Let me just double check, make sure I got it right. Sometimes I don't. Even though it's a 12 AT7, it can still run the heater. It's got two 6.3 volt heaters in it. So this tester tests them at 6.3. Signal is 4. Bias is low. Set to number 16. PGK77. 3516. 3516. I was just chatting with somebody about a Weston Weston tube tester like this one, and I should have said to him, it's an email actually, uh, don't change these controls while the tube is plugged in on this tester. Um, turn it off or pull the tube out when you're changing these controls. My, my other tube tester only when you apply the test are voltages applied to the tube but this one is not that way so bad things can happen if you're not careful with this guy okay so this tube is no doubt warmed up I hate to see this I only see heat on one side of the tube I don't hate to see this that's actually a good thing <laughs> maybe it's a dud already okay so we'll look for shorts now we're watching the meter now no light on this one, the meter will go up if there's a uh, short current flow. Let's do the line check here just to make sure we're good. That's good enough. Now we're ready for the GM test and what should it be? It should be 1190. 1190. Uh, so above here, something above there. Oh, oh, good news. It's dead. <laughs> it's good news. I want to find a dead tube. Okay, let's before we get really excited, let's double check everything again. 12 AT7. 12 AT7. 
It's actually got uh, values written on it, 4,000 and 4,025. So someone tested this before and wrote down the uh, readings they got. Uh, this is obviously not the uh, the GM of the tube. This must be some number from a emissions tester or something like that. Well, I'm not getting anything, so let's double check it all. 6.3, signal level set to 4, 16L, PGK77, PGK77, 3516, 3516. You may think it's overkill to double check this, but uh, 37, sensitivity, the plate is connected to F, set to F. Okay, 111, and we're testing one half of this tube. Let's check it again. Oh, it's a nothing. Now we'll check the other half of the tube. <laughs> okay, that solves that. The problem with this tube, let's see if I can show it to you here, is one heater is not heating. You see, there's one bright orange dot inside there, kind of behind the 7 in the... Uh, in 12 AT there should be two dots in there so one side not heating now that's kind of it's kind of spooky in this tester really because um, it is a 12 AT7 I'll have to assume my, 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 my tester is good I have to assume that, that I found it bad 12 AT7 I gotta go get another one you know what I'm gonna go get another one he says repeating himself look at how excited I've gotten here I'm going to get another one and stick it in this radio and try it right away because I think I probably found the problem. Good. Let's see. Okay, I had to dig around a while, but I got one. 1287. Even though this is coming out of a box, I have no reason to think it's brand new. Could be, though. 12 AT7 USA. Two sets of plates. That's the tube, all right. Put them in here. Switch her on. Of course, it's still set for a 12 AT7, so I don't have to do much here except wait a minute. I can see it's lighting up on this side now where it didn't light up before. I'm a little, yeah, I can see the other side too. So both sides lighting up. That's good. Short test. Good. 111. Holy smokes, she's a winner. Wow, did that ever go over? Really? Almost makes me think something's not set right. And the other half of the tube. Bingo. Same thing. Okay. That's good. That's a, maybe it is brand new. That's fantastic. You know what? I'm going to plug that in this receiver and give it another try. Okay. Gee, you know, this might be it. This might be all there is to it. One dead tube. Well, that got pretty warm. Short time in the tube tester here. Pop them back in. Pop them in, rather. There we go. Okay. Uh, the antenna, we're, we're currently connected to this machine, but it's not turned on. A little bit of wire may act as a bit of a FM antenna. So my shop stereo is on. Volume down. Here. Okay, I think we're ready to go. What will happen? We don't know. Turn it up a little bit. I may not have my shop stereo up high enough yet. Oh. Does that sound any different? It's got a big whopping hum in it. Is 
Okay, not to sweat, not to panic. Let us tune around. Oh yeah. I can't stay on music. Let's go down to I'm usually listening to ninety one point five here. It's usually talk. need a better antenna. Okay, so let's change the antenna situation here because it's really very poor. We can uh, hook them up to an outside antenna. How about just a piece of wire in the shop here first? Let's try that. So basically Basically, this is like a that's just a piece of wire. Of this great Canadian artist. And to do that, we'll begin with this. Well, it doesn't get any easier than that. Uh, gee, today uh, a uh, very famous Canadian musician, poet musician named Leonard Cohen passed away. He's, he's old, he's 82. But he just put out an album just uh, like a year ago. And this is a song from it, I'm sure. I'm just paying my rent every day. Okay, he's not paying his rent anymore, that's for sure. Um, well, the whole world has changed here. We have a receiver that's now working. What am I going to do now? <laughs> what should I do now? I guess I can, without fiddling with this at all, I can just verify that it's working well, as best I can, and uh, see what's up. You know what? This is not a stereo radio station that we're listening to right now. This station actually broadcasts mono. So let's let's pick a stereo one just down here. I'm gonna change the camera position. Okay, hang on. Strap on your uh, seatbelt. There we are. Watch the front panel here. So we've got the signal strength here. Oh no, no, that's not signal strength. This is signal strength. This is whether you tune to the center. There's a red stereo light up there, and then there's multi-path indicator. That's what this is. Huh. Okay, that's really interesting. Really, the yeah, multi-path is obviously when the uh, FM signal is reaching the receiver antenna through a number of different paths, and uh, because the distance is different, you get a slight phase variation, and this causes weird distortion, as I understand it. Uh, modern FM receivers are, seem to be totally impervious to it and you drive around in your car and never hear it. But I guess back in the day they weren't so impervious to it, I don't really know. I've never seen a multi-path indicator. You can kind of see that there's two, two green dots. It's a magic eye. And I don't know if it just comes on or if they close or what. I guess we'll find out by tuning. Yeah, that'd be a good idea. Okay. See if we can get that stereo light to come on. Or or this control to move into the middle. There's a stereo light. Multipath indicators moving. Guess who? It's Wait a minute. That's not supposed to come on. <laughs> I said this wasn't stereo. That should be stereo. Need a little better antenna. Maybe I'm mistaken about. Uh, Maybe the tuning's not quite right. So maybe that's 91.5 where it says 92. Oh, 
I know how to find out. Let's find out. And how representative is she of the larger Saudi society? Exactly. So the front panel's off a bit. So it's really in 91.5 where we are. And that's mono. And this is stereo. If you notice, the tuning indicator never gets into the middle. I think I can fix that. Okay, it's a good church. I'm not going to leave the church. Just go visit another church one Sunday. Yeah, it's a religious you know, station near Aurelia. Just do something different. Not a lot of religious radio in Canada. Dead silence. You know, I picked this up a number of times. Um, it's just a spot here where it's... Who knows what it is? Dead silence. bit of stereo coming on there. So I think if the radio were adjusted properly so you could make the center point, center indicator get to the center, that would help the uh, stereo decoder work too. That's good. I hear the hum in between stations. Okay, that's from something too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what, but... Well... I had this thing on mono the whole time, so I couldn't really... It's interesting. Let's get some stereo in here again. Oh yeah, that's stereo. I can hear it. She's an author, and she's focused on entrepreneurship issues for young people. Um, so, you know, Sadia is uh, using every space, all the space she has, uh, to address. Look how long there's a rain, so tell us about the rain. Um, rain is very interesting because um, she, she's from a, a, a much more um, conservative... Well, I don't know what to say about this control where it really helps much. There we go. I think it's working really well. It just requires a basic tune-up. I think really that's the process I'm going to go through with this, with this guy. Fantastic. Well, that's, you know, just the, one of the most complicated radios I've ever faced. It's just about the easiest repair I've ever done. <laughs> so, uh, fantastic though. Happy about that. No need to test the rest of the tubes unless there's an indication of need. I wouldn't do it just automatically. Wonderful, wonderful. Great, okay. That's quick. Now I gotta learn how to tune one of these guys. Holy smokes. <laughs>